When I first started using React, I would always hear that React is declarative. And I didn't really understand what this meant. I didn't really understand why it was important. I was kind of like, oh, okay, it's declarative instead of imperative. That's nice, I guess. But I didn't really understand what that meant and the importance of it. And I, I do think that in, in hindsight, it is helpful to understand this, and it is kind of good to understand the mental model for working with React. So today we're going to cover those two differences in case you're in a similar position or need a little bit of a, a refresher on this. So effectively here, we have two different forms, and we can get the same result with both imperative and declarative code. So on the left here, this is a form made in a declarative way, kind of the React way. And then on the right, this is a form made in more of an imperative way, or the kind of vanilla JavaScript way would be a more imperative way. So if we go look at the code for this, you see the homepage here in which we render the declarative form component and the imperative form component. And if we go look at these components, this is our declarative form here. And then we have our imperative form here. And on the surface, these components, they both function. So I can add a name and an email for both of them. And they're going to work here. And I'm just simulating the submit button there with a set timeout. But we can do the same thing for each. And then we can, of course, edit, delete, clear the list, and kind of all the normal stuff. Styles are a little bit off here, but for the sake of this, I, I don't think it's a big deal. So looking at the code, let's go look at the handle submit button. So when I submit a new name and email for the form, what does it look like in a declarative versus imperative way? Well, in an imperative way, so here's the handle submit function. What we're going to have to do is effectively tell React every single step that we're going to need to take to manipulate the DOM. So we are going to imperatively say, okay, we're going to do this to the DOM, then we're going to do this, then we're going to do this. And the DOM is just effectively the web page. It's the document object model. It is a tree-like structure that represents all the elements in our web page. So we're going to have to be like, okay, add this text to the DOM, create this element, remove this element, validate this text. We're going to have to do that all just kind of step by step in an imperative way. So here we can see when a submit occurs, we first get the name and email elements from those. I just created refs here in React. And then we, we check them. If they're not there, we use an alert. But if they are there, we'll set loading to true. And this is actually doing something more declarative here. I didn't really worry about it for loading state, more so just for adding items, but this would be a little bit more declarative. But here's where we get into the kind of meat of the more imperative code. So if there is an edit index, so if, the et if they're editing this input rather than submitting it, so they just clicked the edit button here, then what we're going to do is we need to find the list item with the current index. So we have to check the list ref dot current dot children and find the correct index. And then we need to check the list item dot first child dot text content. We need to imperatively set the text content for the correct list item. And then we need to manually set the edit index back to null. And then here we need to kind of clear out the name and email manually. And then we set loading to false. Which honestly, in that case, that's that's not terrible. But if it's not an edit function and they are adding a new element, then what we need to do is call the document.create element. We need to create an li element. And then we create a text node by document.create text node with the name and email here. And then we need to append those manually to our list. And then we need to also add the edit and delete buttons for that list item within our list because we need to mainly add these edit and delete buttons here so that function is also a part of our handle submit so here's our edit button to where we create the button we create the text content we create the classes 
we create the on click. We do the same thing for the delete button here. We also need to create a button container. So these elements actually have okay styles. And then we need to append those to our list. So we need to manually create our edit and delete buttons. And then we come back up here and we add those to our list. So we append those to our list manually. And then we also manually kind of zero out our email and our name. But in a declarative way for our handle submit, we do the, the same thing right here. So we check if the name and email is there and then we say an alert to please fill out the field. But if not, well, if it's an edit here, if it's an edit operation, then we just need to create a new array of our previous items because in React, when you're setting a new array, you should create a completely new array. When doing so, you shouldn't just mutate the current array. But we create a new array for the updated items at the edit index. We add the new name and email from state because this time around we're using React state to manage this. So we're setting the edit index name and email to the new name and email here. And then we're going to set our items to the updated items. And then we're resetting our edit index to null. And then we basically zero things out here. So pretty straightforward, you know, not, not terribly different from this edit operation here. But what happens when we need to go add a new item? Well, in React, we just declaratively say, okay, let's set the items to be the previous items plus our new name and email. So we are, we are just very much so declaratively just with a single line of code setting our items to be all the previous items plus our new item in our list. And then in our code down here, we just take our items, map over them, and render out this kind of same list item component for all these different items. So we just kind of declaratively say, okay, map over the, these items and render something that looks like this for all the items. So really, with just a single line of code, we add items to our list. And we just declaratively say, these should be our new items rather than needing to imperatively, okay, this is going to create our new list item. This is going to create the text for our list item. We need to append that to our list item right here. Then we need to add the edit and delete buttons. So we imperatively do all of that work here. And then we append that to our list and then zero things out. Like that is going to be so much more complex and more difficult to manage rather than just declaratively saying, okay, set the items to this and then just kind of let React figure out how to now take that state and manipulate the DOM to add all these items. Because at the end of the day, like React is going to have to do the same thing. Like we're still using JavaScript. We're still using the web browser. We still need to add all these elements to the page. So React is going to turn this into more imperative code, but the, what are the benefits of React is that we can just kind of declaratively say, hey, this is what we want the page to look like. You can do all the figuring out of all of like this stuff right here. Yeah, you, you, we'll, we'll let you handle that. I know that you enjoy doing that, so you can handle that. And we're just going to say, hey, set the items to be this new list. And this is kind of the crux of declarative versus imperative you get into cases to where especially in more complex applications and a little bit more complex logic like i tried to make this a little bit more complex here to where we're adding edit and delete buttons and stuff to make it clear like hey this is a lot less fun to add an item to where we have all this kind of manual code written out compared to just like this single line of code of hey set the items to this to where we just declared this is what we want our page to look like because these are the items we want to show on our page. So really that's the difference between imperative and declarative in React. Imperative programming, you have to really kind of go through every single step of what you want to do. And in the context of web development, kind of every single step of manipulating the DOM, of creating different nodes, of appending children, 
of adding class names and text content, all this stuff. Really, in React, you do not want to be doing this. There might be some cases to where like you you have to do some manual DOM manipulation, but really you should try to as much as possible to never have to do stuff like this and try to always do things the declarative way in React to where you just declare, this is what I want my state to look like. And then React will figure out how to manipulate the DOM to make the DOM match what you want the state to look like. So in React, you should just be declaring what you want your UI to look like. But in other forms of web development, you might have to do things much more imperatively to where you kind of step-by-step -step manipulate the DOM on your own. And as you can see, that could become potentially pretty complex in larger complex applications and become really difficult to reason about and to actually maintain and extend over the long run. So I hope this video helps you kind of understand this concept a little bit better. I know when I was starting out, I, I just, I heard it a lot, but I didn't, I didn't really kind of understand maybe the benefit of why React is the way it is. So yeah, I hope this helps and I'll see you in that next one.